Hey Discovery Rangers, last week we finished up the book of 2nd Chronicles with our Bible lessons, so this week we're going to jump right into our new Bible lesson in the book of Ezra. So we're going to start at Ezra 1. While Ezra was praying and confessing, weeping and throwing himself down before the house of God, a large crowd of Israelites, men, women, and children, gathered around him. They too wept bitterly. Then Shachaniah, son of Jehiel, one of the descendants of Elam, said to Ezra, We have been unfaithful to our God by marrying foreign women from the peoples around us. But in spite of this, there is still hope for Israel. Now let us make a covenant before our God to send away all these women and their children, in accordance with the counsel of the Lord and those who fear the commandments of our God. Let it be done according to the law. Rise up. This matter is in your hands. We will support you, so take courage and do it. So Ezra rose up and put the leading priests and Levites all under Israel oath to do what they had been suggested, and they took the oath. And that comes from Ezra 10, 1-5. Ezra was a prophet. He lived in Israel after the Jewish people came back from Babylon. In the past, the people had not faithfully followed God's commands. Ezra led the people to repent of their sins. Repentance is more than just a feeling. Often, we feel sorry that we did something bad. The people in the book of Ezra felt sorry. In fact, they felt so bad for not living for God that they were moved to tears and mourning for their failures. But repentance is more than just not, fe to f than not feeling sorry. To repent is to have a change of mind. Repentance requires a change in how we think and act. It isn't just that we feel sorry, but that we have made a decision to change how we have been living. In Ezra 10, the people changed how they lived. They chose to live for God, even if it cost them. They made changes to their families, to their lifestyles, and to the other ways that they thought. The first step in repentance is, is to confess our sins. Confession means that we admit the things that we have done are wrong to God. 1 John 1.9 says we should confess to other people too. This helps us turn away from our sins and live for God. A person must be humble to confess sin. When we confess our sins, we inspire others to confess their sins. Everyone needs to do that because everyone has sinned. In Ezra's book, the people confessed their sins and changed how they lived. We must admit that we sin and change how we live. When we confess and repent, God forgives us. This means that he sees our lives as if the sins have never happened. Now, one thing you have to know for this book is that at the end of Second Chronicles, the people of Israel were taken into captivity by the Babylonians. And they were there for a pretty long time until they were eventually let back into Israel. But they were gone long enough that a lot of the people lost connection with God. They forgot what they were living for. They forgot, you know, the religion of their people. And they kind of went and followed other gods again, whether it was the gods of the Babylonians or anyone else they they lost their way and when they were allowed back to their homes uh god once again sent prophets like in this book the uh, the book of ezra ezra was a prophet and he was sent back to these people to remind them about god and the people when they heard that they were sinning were receptive they heard ezra what he was saying and they cried out to god for him to forgive them so they were not ignorant of this they didn't they didn't even know they were living without knowing what they were doing was wrong until Ezra came and told them that they were living their lives incorrectly. So that leads us to our questions that we will answer in our Zoom class. Question one, what sins did the people in the book of Ezra confess? Question two, why is repentance more than just a feeling? In other words, if you're saying, why is it more than just saying sorry? And question number three, why do we need to confess our sins? So whether that be confessing our sins to God or telling someone 
what we've done wrong. All right, so I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say on Friday. And until then, have a good rest of the week. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. to show Peace.